This is Twit. You titled the article Navi Attacks the Mainstream. I feel like this hints that this is an affordable card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is... This is basically their replacement for that price point that we've been used to from them, that sort of $200 range part from the RX 480 up to the 580. And then we've been, for a while now, we've gotten used to seeing their RX 590 selling at around that $200 price point. And here's another card that's $200 for a desktop GPU that's targeting 1080p performance for an 8 gigabyte version, but they're also offering a 4 gigabyte version Basically, you know, if you're targeting 1080p, you don't necessarily need all that extra video memory, depending on what you're doing, what game you're playing. So then they have this cheaper variant, which is only 169. And it pretty much goes head to head against the GTX 1650 Super, though that card is $10 cheaper. So that's hmm. that's the backstory for this launch. NVIDIA obviously knew this was coming. AMD had released to OEMs, this Radeon RX 5500 product. It turned out that was indeed an OEM-only product. They'd said something about it coming to desktop in December when we were first briefed about it. Well, here it is. And the desktop version is actually called the RX 5500 XT. And when I first Hmm. heard that, I'm thinking, oh, so this is like, what are the specs? What what is this? uh, what, What differentiates this from the OEM version? And really, it's just clock speeds. The XT is faster. <laughs> it's it's the same GPU. It's the new Navi 14. Right. Not to be confused with 14 nanometer. This is still a 7 nanometer part. It's still the new RDNA architecture. Uh, we just got Navi 10 or Navi 10 first. That was with the RX 5700 series. And now we have right. Navi 14. And this is the same chip they're using for their 5500M mobile parts, like what we find in the new MacBook Pro 16 that we talk about every week, it seems. And so it's 22 compute units, 1,408 shaders, uh, 88 texture units, and 32 ROPs. And it's using really fast GDDR6 memory. This is uh, 14 gigabit per second memory. And Mm -hmm. like I said, a 4 gigabyte and an 8 gigabyte version are going to be available. In fact, they are available. What I was sent by AMD was a partner card. So this is a partner-only launch. Companies like XFX and Sapphire and Asus and and the rest are going to have their own products for these. AMD doesn't have their own reference card. That was kind of the OEM-only market for those. So we got this nice Nitro Pulse card from Sapphire, which is one of those dual-fan aftermarket cards. And... I ran it through some benchmarks at 1080p uh, using high settings to to see how it compared against other like sub $250 cards. And if you look at the performance numbers, it's basically it loses to the RX 590 in most of the tests by a very small margin. And it's faster than the GTX 1650 Super by a small margin. So it's right in between those two cards. And the 1650 Super starts at 159. This one's 169. I tested the 4 gigabyte model. And then that older RX 590 has been selling for about 199. So it's it's a good value. And it's, it's a little surprising to me, I guess, that they wouldn't release a product that could best their existing uh, mainstream 1080p graphics card at the $200 price point. But when I saw the pricing, it kind of made sense. They're just sort of replacing it. It's it's almost as fast as an RX 590 in games like the ones I tested where you're not really pushing things. I think you'd have more of an advantage the higher up you went. And that RX 590 gives you some like 1440p gaming capability. It has more memory than this card. So you'd a better comparison of that will have to wait until I have an eight gigabyte card to test. But as it stands, it importantly does beat NVIDIA's product in this segment because it's faster than the GTX 1650 Super. Uh, it is also $10 more. So that's, we're getting into that. We've been talking about this all year. Every $10, there's another GPU option. And it has been, sort of an NVIDIA partner 
uh, issue where it's not really an issue for them, but they're clogging up the market with graphics cards at every single $10 price point from $150 to $500. And then this just kind of complicates things because for $10 more than an NVIDIA product, you can get an AMD product and it's providing you just a little bit more performance, not big gains, but you know, uh, I think I had a little tally here. It was uh, plus one and a half percent in Red Dead Redemption 2, so not a huge gain there. Plus seven and a half percent in Metro Exodus, plus almost four percent in Far Cry 5. Uh, it only lost to NVIDIA in the one older benchmark I ran, which is the World of Tanks Encore. Not really an old benchmark, but just not very taxing. And that's uh, it, those benchmarks tend to lean a little bit more towards uh, the NVIDIA cards and even the Pascal generation of nvidia cards do quite well the 1060 6 gigabyte beat it out in that test but uh just a quick look at performance there but it just validated what i expected which was based on these specs it would be just a little bit faster than nvidia's card and i don't know i, I think it's kind of interesting that at this point if if nvidia is concerned that they're not leading the charts at 1080p in this 160 to 170 range, it could force them to lower the price a little bit. If we see another $10 price drop, uh, that would place the 1650 super right at 150 where the original 1650 launched. And it, just in case you haven't or have forgotten, the 1650, the GTX 1650, which <laughs> launched this year, is about, you know, 30, 40% slower than these cards for like 10 or 15, 10 or $20 more. You're getting so much more card that to me, it doesn't really make sense to keep the 1650 around. It's at the bottom of every chart. It's at the bottom of the four charts in my review here. And it's just sitting there at $149 for pretty anemic performance compared to even older products like the 1060. So I would love to see NVIDIA just discontinue that, slot the 1650 Super in right at that 149 price point. And then, and then they could say, hey, we have the 1080p champion because our card is $20 less than AMD's card, and that would force AMD to drop their price. So I'm just seeing these right. 1080p price wars starting. At least that's what I'm hoping for. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of exciting. We're, we, it took us all year, but we're finally to the point where both companies have filled out the sort of mid-range and entry-level mainstream graphics card segments and things are starting to become more competitive and now they're going to have to start competing with each other on price. And we've already seen some $10 price drops on NVIDIA cards. The 1660 is now selling for $199 with like $10 discount codes and I'm sure we'll see a right. price drop so that it will match the price of that 8 gigabyte variant of this new Radeon cards, so hence the so, Star Wars puns in our uh, coverage of this. <laughs> Begun so many the Star Wars, Wars puns. have, yes. <laughs>